Hey everybody, it's Brian with Engadget. Uh, we are backstage tomorrow from Google. Um, went pretty well. well. You had a good time. I had a great. I had a great time. Uh, I, I'd love to hear a little bit about your 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 own personal history. What kind of led you to to uh, Mountain View? So I joined Google around two and a half years ago, and I've been in the Valley for a long time. A lot of different companies, large companies, small companies, and I think all engineers at some point are led to. Google. <laughs> Natural migration, I know a lot of my friends did, and it's been really, really exciting since I joined. Uh, I worked on Translate first for the first year, and then joined the search team about a year and a half ago. That's, that's interesting. I mean, how, how easy is it to sort of jump from, from one, one, uh, one section of Google to the other? Um, Google's very open to people moving around, and there was a uh, it, it, I knew people in the search team, so it was kind of easy, and it was something I was very interested in and something that I had some background in. So uh, it, the company is really, really open to it. Uh, obviously, Translate's a pretty exciting place to be as well. I mean, what, what drew you specifically to search? Search is the core of the company, and it's just really fascinating to work on something that has such a huge impact. Serving 100 billion queries a month, nobody comes near that scale. The complexity of technology that you need in order to serve that, and also, as I was talking about earlier, we're just in the beginning. There's so much more we can do. It's a very, very exciting time in the search team, so I really look forward to all the new things that we can do. So all of these things combined really make it exciting to work in the search team. Yeah, obviously Google was built around search. I mean, that was that's why the company started, but it's still kind of the big, the big thing there. It's still the backbone of the company, you'd say? There are a lot of backbones to the company. <laughs> it's still a very, very important part of the company, and there are a lot of exciting things that we're planning on doing. One of the things that, that really struck me when you were um, out there showing the slides was, um, you know, you showed something from 1998, and yeah. aside from the logo, not all that much aesthetically is, has changed. Um, how important is it to maintain a consistent aesthetic across search? So a lot of things have actually changed if you look at the details. It's hard to see them from a 20,000 foot view, but the fact that we have images and videos and news into the corpuses, there's a lot more information in the snippets. Features like autocomplete, there's a lot of things that have changed pretty significantly in it. What's important to us on the UI front is making sure that it's easy for users to find the information they need. And what's interesting, you ask of kind of how important is it to maintain status quo? Well with these new devices, it's a new frontier. So it's a new challenge for us, how do we get the information in a smaller screen? So there's a lot of focus on the UI and on making sure that we keep that simplicity so people can get what they need very, very quickly. And uh, maintaining consistency must be important too. Is, you know, if, you, if you're used to using Google on your desktop, you should be able to have a pretty similar experience on mobile. Right, we want to have a very consistent experience. We do a lot of usability testing, so anytime we have a new feature, we bring people into a usability lab to see how they how they do. So it doesn't have to be identical, right? It should be optimized for the form factor, optimized for the context, but it should be something that people can use intuitively, and we go through many, many iterations when we're designing a new feature or working on a new platform. So if it's not working, people don't understand it, they get confused, we're back to the drawing board. I think part of the reason why it's maintained, a, you know, again, relatively consistent aesthetic is this idea of, and uh, sort of keeping keeping features out of people's way until they need it, right? I mean, it's there when you need it, but um, it's kind of a bare bones, relatively bare bones page. But when you search for flight results, they're there, but there's not necessarily, a, you know, a flight result tab or button. We want to get you the information you need when you need it, and only the information you need. So absolutely, make sure that it's clean and clear, and the most, inform the most important information is front and center. How, how essential is voice becoming, just to, to search? I mean, obviously, it's, it's huge on the mobile space, um, you know, Google Now. Uh, is, is voice something that's important across the board? So voice is really important to us, and we see it especially on mobile. We see the number of voice queries increasing more than the number of queries. And with that, the number of natural language queries is increasing as well. So it's really interesting to see how people use it. What you see is that the different form factor makes a big difference. On desktop, sure, voice is there, but it's so easy to type. But on mobile, it's just really, really hard to type. 
And you also see in places where other countries where it's harder to input, like they have input editors like in Japanese. So their voice is also very important. So any place where no matter what the device is, where it's hard for a user to input text, then voice is very important. And with the advance of our technology, it makes it even more important. Because a couple years ago, well, voice could have been important, but we didn't have the speech recognition. So it was so poor that it wouldn't be a good experience. But now look at the complex queries I did on stage. Those were hard. There's a lot of words that are difficult to understand, and it got every single one of them. So you've been there for, what, two, almost three years at Google, yeah. and how long have you been on the search team for? A year and a half. A year and a half. Um, so I, I don't know how, how much you, you can speak to this, but I'm wondering if the idea of doing voice search is something that has, you know, has been there all along as kind of an ideal way of searching without typing, or whether Google went through all these different input methods and ended up landing on search as the ideal method. Well, if you think about it, it's very natural, because how do you talk to people? It's through voice. How do you converse? It's through voice. So it's really a natural extension of what you would want a computer to do. And teams of researchers inside Google, outside Google, have been working on speech recognition for a very long time. So it's not a, it's not a new revelation. You, you had mentioned towards the end of, of the talk, um, and I think you were actually almost soliciting feedback from people, you know, what, what sort of, because obviously you can't speak about certain things that you guys are, are working on, but um, how, how actively does, does Google actually engage the community as far as, you know, getting feature ideas? As I said, we, we do a lot of testing with users, whether it's on new product ideas or whether it's uh, how a feature is working. For me as a product manager, it's very exciting for me to hear what people want. So I always am seeking to find out either through formal means or informal means. I get a lot of input from people even when I don't ask for it. But absolutely, it's so important that we understand our users, understand what they need, understand what problems they want to solve. We actually did a really interesting study recently. It was called a daily informi information needs study. Are you familiar with this? So. Um, what we did, and we, we do this regularly, is we took a couple hundred participants and we gave them an app on their Android phone and it buzzed them eight times a day and said, what did you want to know recently? Not what did you search for, but just what did you want to know? And then they would respond in that context wherever they were. And the results were fascinating. We got over 3,000 information needs. And with it comes things that Google does today and a whole bunch that Google doesn't do today. So it was really fascinating for us and we do these kind of studies regularly to find out what information needs are we servicing and what aren't we. I'm wondering about that, you pointed out that specific phrasing, I'm wondering how, why that, why those words and how those words are different from just asking people what they searched. Because we want to know what their information needs are, not what they conceive of today searching for. For example, somebody would say, I need to find my keys. That's not something, if you ask them, what did you search for? They would never say that. But if you ask them, what did they need to know recently? They'll say, well, I couldn't find my keys. I want to know where my keys are. So it's like, the, the idea being that they haven't searched for that because they know for a fact that that's not maybe not something today's search engines are capable of. You know, a lot of people don't realize what they can search for. So there's a lot of things that you can search for today. My demo today, most people probably don't realize that you could do a lot of those natural query, language queries that you can. People don't realize that you can find tax forms on the internet. I'm always astounded by people who don't really understand everything that they can search for. So there's a lot that we do, at, in fact, uh, service today, and we have answers for and people don't realize it, and then there's a whole set of things that we don't do. So all it's true all across the board in all these areas. It brings up an interesting point, and I'm wondering if, in a sense, if it's possible, this sort of minimalistic approach, it could potentially be doing not a disservice mm -hmm. to, 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 to Google or its users, but certainly bearing these potential features that could af affect people's life. I mean, what, what's, the, what's the discovery process? What's the search process for features in search? 
That's a really good question and something that we struggle with all the time and we're always introducing new features. We're testing them out and, and seeing if people use them. So anytime we have a new feature, we put it someplace on the page, we always test it. Everything is driven by data. Are people clicking on it? Are they finding it? Are they using it? Try it in a lot of different places on the page. What works better? What works worse? If you've got a feature out there and nobody's using it, well then we sometimes deprecate it. So it's a lot of trial and error. And you have to have this fine balance between making sure that the experience is still simple enough to you just don't distract the majority. But give the uh, but give the new features a chance. And then you know the other thing is mobile. You just have so much less space. So, so Google isn't so stubborn that they'll you know that they'll put something out there and, and pull it back in. I mean, so you're you're not afraid of of kind of not publicly but relatively pu publicly trying and failing. You know, try putting something out there that do doesn't necessarily work. We experiment all the time, and I think our users know that not everything they see is a full fledged product. So we are constantly experimenting with new things, and that's part of that's part of moving forward. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nice when you can be in a point where people are are expecting that, and people appreciate that uh -huh. Google is doing this experimentation. So when something doesn't you know necessarily succeed the way it was supposed to, it's clearly just kind of a part of, of Google's culture. Absolutely. Yeah, and and you know, certainly experimentation is a lot of experimentation is kind of going on on around the Google offices at all times. Yes. Um, Wondering how how it seems like every every few years you know another competitor kind of comes up in search and how is, is Google how closely is Google monitoring that you know are are you looking at the competition or are you guys just focused on doing doing what you do? We're focused on meeting our user needs. What do people want? What do they need? Are we servicing them? That's really our primary focus, making sure that we can get users what they need. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll be back with, uh, I suppose, more, more interviews. <laughs>